Hi, this is Joe Rabel. Wanted to uh, run through the S&P 500 chart uh, more from an analytical standpoint than creating a specific trade, just to give a background of how I would go about framing this out. Um, I've got a monthly chart. I always start with the high time frame. The monthly chart is still has an 18 above the 40, um, but and the trend is up, but for the first time in a while, the 18 month line is actually curling back down and price is below both of these two moving averages. Also of note is the fact that the MACD line has crossed down through its signal line. And we do have a little bit of distance here um, between where a MACD is and the zero line. Uh, but the fact that this crossed down through its signal, I think is fairly important, especially because um, there was no confirmation uh, on a MACD basis when this hit a new high. So we have momentum divergence in place uh, that sort of weighs down the price action somewhat. But I think more important than anything is uh, that this MACD is, is sort of suggesting there's going to be some resistance on the way back up. And that's confirmed by the fact that the 18 month is rolling over for the first time. So uh, a few other things that I would probably do as I'm evaluating where this is situated. Um, this is the uh, Fibonacci retracement tool, and um, you drag it up from the start of the bull market back in 2009 all the way up to the peak. And, you know, this is more of a ballpark uh, number. It's not exact. I didn't I didn't click it into the top and to the bottom. It take me a few more minutes to do that. But either way, uh, the halfway point is about 2020 to be exact. So we're getting a pretty good idea. Um, the 38 percent retracement, which is this green line here, and it's right around 23, 48, 49 is the exact number. Um, the prior low is is 23.46. So that's the low from 2018. So this is a pretty important area I think I'd want to be aware of uh, based on where how we're situated right now, right around this 23.40 to 23.50 zone. Um, I'd be looking for signs, probably like on an hourly chart that uh, we're getting some kind of a turn there. Um, if we come down and undercut that area and then the hourly starts to show some strength um, based on, say, ADX kicking in or you get like a one, two, three change in trend, then I start to feel like, um, you know, maybe we've put, put in somewhat of a solid low. I would do that at each one of the key support levels that I've identified. So, you know, if I'm looking at price support, this is a pretty good spot if prices keep dropping. Um, especially considering the 50% retracement, as I said, was is around 2020. So um, these are the types of things I think you want to be on the lookout for. I think as an individual investor, you have a big advantage. I mean, the institutional guys, the guys who are managing money as professionals, for the most part, they have to stay invested. They have to stay in here and fight day in and day out. They have, they have a charter that says they, they can't only have like 10% cash. So they're basically playing the relative game. They're trying to beat the market. Um, in times like this, as an individual investor, I think it's it's a huge advantage to be able to stand aside and have a lot of cash on hand and let things play out a little bit. Um, I, I, I know the idea out there is to, to want to dive in when things are down. And if you're a mutual fund buyer and you want to kind of leg your way in, I think that's a very good idea. I have no problem with right now taking... If you have a, a specific amount of money, you want to divide that up and say a third or 25 percent lots, uh, you know, put 25 percent to work now, even 30 percent, and then maybe watch for another month and, and sort of dollar cost your way average in now that this thing has dropped down. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of doing that when the market's banging new highs every month. But after a massive drop like this, where you've taken out probably three or four years worth of profits. I actually think it's a very good idea to do that kind of buying. If you're, if you're playing the mutual fund game, if you're playing the stock game, go back and look at the video that I did as um, if you if a, if Warren Buffett were a technical analyst. That video describes, I think, where your, your head should be right now as an individual investor. You have to have a specific plan of what you look for. What is your what is the most successful plan that you have in mind that works for you? And you wait for an individual stock to meet those criteria. 
don't be overly consumed about the market fluctuations and everything's jumping around and doing all these different things. Wait for the market to come to you. Let stocks come to you. Don't feel the need to be in all the time. Sometimes the best thing you can do is just be in cash and preserve your capital. That can be the most important thing. All right, getting back to the chart, let's switch this to a weekly chart and see uh, if there's anything else we can identify. Now, what, what I notice is the violence of the decline. I mean, this is a very rapid uh, drop here. We're definitely getting oversold. There's been some damage done to the MACD. Um, ADX is showing some pretty good strength, but we're coming into this zone here and we've made a very, very big drop. So I think you need to be prepared for you know some kind of a big rally coming back up. Um, is it going to be a trend changing rally? In other words, are we going to get back and start trending back to the upside? I would say probably not without some mending. Uh, the analogy I like to use is this kind of reminds me of like an injured athlete. Uh, you know, th this type of drop, this type of breakdown. When an athlete gets injured, he needs to go through a rehab process. And, and a chart like this that has been damaged needs to go through a mending process. It's not the type of thing where you're going to go down and then turn on a dime. I know that happened in 2018, but it is more of the exception than the rule. Um, if you look at what took place back in 2015, uh, market went through a correction and went sideways for a while, went through sort of somewhat of a rehab process. And I, I think that is a little bit more in line with what I would expect uh, after this type of a violent drop. Um, so, again, I think, uh, you know, one of the things that I have tried to, to uh, stick with is to make sure that if I'm looking at a specific pattern, say on MACD basis, and all the MACD, so if I go and look at the monthly, I'm below the signal line, okay? If I go and look at the weekly, I'm below the signal line. If I'm below the daily, I'm below the signal line uh, on the daily as well. I've got all three timeframes pointing negative. What that tells me is really my only option right now is to short. I mean, if I, if I see a rally, I would want to short it. Uh, now, because we've gotten so far away, and I, this is the reason why I wanted to look at the daily chart, look at how far both the MACD and the signal line have gotten from the zero level. This is the, I mean, I'm going back, I can go back a long way. This is the longest, this is the farthest we have been on a daily chart on a MACD basis away from its zero line. And this is an overbought, oversold oscillator. I mean, I know it's used as a momentum indicator, but the reality is it is an overbought, oversold oscillator, and we're extremely oversold on a daily basis, really on a weekly as well. I mean, you could argue on all time frames, but on a daily, it's 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 definitely at an extreme. Um, so, you know, I, I think you have to be very, very careful about just diving in as an individual investor. Take advantage of the fact that you don't have to sit there and play the game all the time. Wait for the wait for a little bit more of a clear signal when the volatility skyrockets, when the volume skyrockets, when there's gaps all over the place. You need to be very, very careful and preserve capital during these periods. Don't feel the need to have to dive in. Um, if you see something, I mean, if you're an extreme buyer, like to buy stuff on extreme weakness or whatever, and you see some kind of an undercut and rally pattern, okay, that, that's a part of your plan. But for the most part, I think most people are going to be better served waiting for a little bit more of a clear signal. Um, even if you wait from an hourly chart standpoint, wait for the one, two, three to develop on an hourly chart. And I think, uh, you know, you're going to save yourself some money. Um, let the market rally, let it rally and then let it come back and test. I mean, these are things that I think are pretty important right now. Uh, if you're if you're trying to uh, preserve capital, uh, you know, make sure you have money to play with during the good times, because, you know, the reality is we just went through a period from 2008, uh, 2009, all the way. This is a very, very good period to make money right now. I wouldn't consider this a great period to make money. Uh, you know, there's a lot of volatility and movement is phenomenal, but it's it, there's not a uh, it's it, it's uh, a lot of gaps, um, not a lot of uh, it, it's really disjointed and the price action is just uh, really hard to predict right now. So anyway, I uh, hope this was helpful. Please hit the subscribe button and the like button and we'll talk to you soon.